unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. I feel the presence of Almighty God. This is holy ground. Somebody sing it. We're standing on holy
the time this service ends, you're going to be healed. Totally healed. Totally healed. Somebody say amen. By the time this service ends, you're going to be totally healed. Totally healed. Totally healed. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of God here. I'm not encouraging you in the Lord. I'm telling you what is here. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. Are you hungry for the word? Yes. I said, are you hungry for the word? Yes. Praise God. The Bible says he sent his word and did what? He sent his word and did what? Praise God. Today I wanted to talk about the power to receive. Tell your neighbor the power to receive. Tell them one more time the power to receive. Hallelujah. I want to talk about the power to receive. The power to receive. Hallelujah. Romans 5.17. If you're there you say, Amen. The Bible says, One, two, three, let's go. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one man, much more they which receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in this life by one Jesus Christ. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Now, the Bible didn't say that if for by one man's offense death reigned, much more they which were given the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in the life by one Jesus Christ. The Bible didn't say, for if by one man's offense death reigned by one man, 
And he says, much more they which are given the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in this light by one Jesus Christ. It's not about the giving. It's about the receiving. Somebody say amen. I know many of us read scriptures. Many scriptures. Like, we've been given everything that pertains to life and godliness. That's a fact. But it does not mean that because you've been given everything that pertains to life and godliness, it means that you're going to walk in it. Hallelujah. You all read that we've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. It does not mean that because you're blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, it does not mean you have it. And many people can have precious promises as such, claim them every day, but walk this world, die like normal men and never receive it. Somebody say amen. So there's a difference between you saying that you have and you experiencing what you claim to have. And that's why many Christians have issues with. It doesn't mean that they don't quote scripture. Hallelujah. It only means that even if they quote it, even if they do what? They don't walk in what God has said is theirs. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's not enough for you to know what is freely given unto you by Jesus. It also takes another place. It takes the notch up higher and introduces you to the place of how to walk in. And many people don't know how to receive. Many people don't have the power to receive. They don't know how to function in the power to receive. And that's what I want to share with you tonight. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Give me the message version of that. The Bible says in the message version, where we are, Romans 5, 17. He says, For if death got the upper hand through one man's wrongdoing, he says, can you imagine the breath taking recovery, life makes sovereign life in those who grasp, the Bible says, with both hands, this wildly extravagant life gift, this grand setting everything right that the one man Jesus Christ provides. Do you know what happens when a man receives what is given? Do you know what happens when a man takes faith and receives what is given? Can you imagine what it I mean, what will happen if a man will grasp with both hands? The message uses the word grasping with both hands. The KJV says receiving this thing. Hallelujah. You see, you can even be in a service and they say, this year you're going to increase. Ah, I receive it. But you've just said it. You have not grasped it in spirit. Hallelujah. They can say, ah, this year your answer is to prayer. And you say, that is me they are talking about right there. But then you don't grasp it with both hands. They can say, ah, this year you're going far. But you see, you don't grasp it with both hands. It's one thing to receive the message. It's one thing to read the Bible. It's one thing to receive a prophetic word. But it's another for you to get a hold of it and receiving it. The problem with our saints sometimes is not that they don't know the truth. The problem with them is that they don't know how to receive truth in their inner beings. For these things to produce results. Hallelujah. Praise God. And that is what I want to introduce to you today. In Matthew chapter 13, the Bible speaks of the parable of the sower. Let's go to the 19th verse. Matthew 13 verse 19. The Bible says, when anyone, somebody say anyone. Say anyone. He says, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth it away, that that which was sown in his heart, this is he, the Bible says, which receives the seed by the wayside. Praise God. In other words, the state of his heart was, was like the figurative representation of putting seed on the ground, on, on, a, on a road. Not on fertile ground, but on the road. I don't know if I'm making sense. It's like you're getting seeds, and then you start planting them on, 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 on a well-done road. You're, you're throwing seeds on the road. What happens? Answer me, what happens? What happens? Praise God. 
So he says that they hear the word of the kingdom and they understand it not. Give me the Amplified of that. Probably I'll let explain it in the Amplified. The Amplified says, while anyone who is hearing the word of the kingdom and does not grasp and comprehend it, he says the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is what is the meaning of them which are sown alongside the what? In other words, there are people who receive the word every Sunday, every Thursday, every Tuesday. They are in church every Wednesday. They are receiving the word. But because of the ground on which it is sown, the Bible says that the devil comes and snatches it. Why? Because they don't grasp it. They don't comprehend it. They don't get a hold of it. Because, let me explain something here. Understanding the things of the Spirit is the beginning slate for a man grasping the things of the Spirit. You cannot receive what is not understood. Somebody say amen. You cannot receive what is not understood. I'm still laying background because I'm about to go a bit deep and I don't want to lose anybody. Hallelujah. So let me begin with the surface. Understanding is the one prerequisite needed in every Christian and believer's life. To enter the life of receiving. What you have not understood, you will never receive. Somebody say amen. Tell me about what you don't understand, you can never receive. What you don't apprehend, you can never grasp. Somebody say amen. Yet he gives the, the opposite of that in verse 23. And he says, But he that receiveth seed into the good ground, is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it, which also does what? Beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, sometimes it's not that we don't receive things. God doesn't give us promises. He doesn't speak in our lives about walking with Him or anything to walk into. But sometimes we don't know the power. We don't know how to function in the power of receiving. I'll give you an example in Hebrews. The Bible says that by faith, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. The word there for receiving is lambanoring. Getting a hold in the spirit. God had promised her that her and Abraham were going to have a child. That was no doubt. But almost 24 years after that prophecy, Abraham and Sarah were walking childless. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abraham and Sarah were walking childless. Yet the Lord had given them a child. Praise the Lord. He went to God. And he told God that, How can I be happy seeing that I have no seed? I don't have a child. I don't have anybody to take over this. I have a servant, I think Eliezer. Maybe that guy will take over. But I don't have my own child. And God tells them, Okay, I've given you a child. Translate to your present day. I've given you that ministry. I've given you that car. I've given you that job. I've given you that marriage. I've given you that baby. You're going to conceive. And then 24 years, many of them loosely start to say things like, um, you know, God can promise things, but it is in his time to fulfill. But they don't understand exactly what it means to fulfill. I'm going to prove to you by scripture. That when God gives you something, it's up to you when you want to walk into it. And I'm going to prove that by scripture. So they wait 24 years. Until one day, Sarah receives. She lambanos strength to conceive a seed. And when she conceived that seed, the Bible says it bore her a child. God put a difference between the seed conceived and the child produced. Hallelujah. Some of you think that they were, they were one and the same because of the versions in which you read. But if you read from the original Greek, you realize that he puts the difference between the seed and the child. She conceived seed. Luke 8, 11 is, the parable is that the seed is the word of God. In other words, she received, she got the power to receive a particular message in her spirit. And when she received that message in her spirit, she conceived and brought forth child. Hallelujah. The place of conception begins when a man grasps. When a man grasps. When a man gets it in the spirit. When you lambano it, when you get a hold of it in the spirit, everything outside starts to change. Hallelujah. You start to walk into what God has promised you to walk in. 
Some of you, you can even die without having experienced what was prophesied, spoken upon your life by scripture, simply because you don't know how to receive strength to conceive seed to bear child. Child can be anything. And tonight that is what I want to touch. Some people think that receiving simply means to say, ah, I receive it in the name of Jesus. That is not receiving. Receiving is deeper than that. It's deeper than that. If you learn to receive, you're going to be strong. That is what he's saying in Romans 5.17. He says that if by death one, if death came in the world by one man, right? He says, how much more will they which receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign or rule in this one life by one man, Jesus? How, how much more? He's saying, you just imagine... Think for a moment what will happen if a man receives. See, see how God is looking at the church? He's looking at them at the place of receiving. It's all available, but they're not receiving it. And Paul, the man of the Spirit, is communicating in a dimension saying, Oh, how much more they which receive? How much more they which receive? Because they're already given these things. The essence of the Holy Spirit in our lives the Bible says it's the affirmation of the things which were freely given unto us by God. When you have the Holy Spirit, He's the confirmation of everything freely given unto you by God. When you are in co- when you are relating with God, that's what they call freedom. Freedom is not worshiping with money in your pocket. Freedom is every time you stand in the presence of God, you see whatever is free. You see whatever is free. You see whatever God has promised to be free. You cannot claim to walk in the spirit. And you carry not the liberty. Of the freedom to know. What is free by the spirit. Many of the things many of you are praying for. And are putting in the future. They are already given by God. And the essence of a man fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Is to tell you these things are yours. In Romans I think 8.32 he says. If he. Give me Romans 8.32. He says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up up for us all. He says, How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? The fact that Jesus gave you, God gave you Jesus. What can he hold back from you? What can he hold back from you? Some of you are feeling sorry for being blessed. Some of you are feeling, you're feeling too humble to receive. That is why the next line speaks of who shall lay charge on the Lord's elect? Who? Who will blame them for being a success? Who will blame you for being an increasing person? Who will blame you for being the most successful lawyer in the world? Who will blame you for being the most successful businessman? Who will blame you for being the deepest preacher? Who will lay a charge on you? Is it the God who justified that blessing on your life? No. Who will lay a charge on you? Why should you be sorry to be blessed? Tell your neighbor, I'm not sorry that I'm blessed. Mugambe. I'm not sorry. That I'm blessed. Why? Because he counted it justifiable for me to be blessed. If you have a problem, get born again too. Hallelujah. I'm not sorry for being wise. I'm not sorry for being increasing. No. The Bible says, for where is our boasting? Serving faith. That is where God has allowed you and I to boast. Because he knows faith. Is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. He says, For by it the elders obtained a good report. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Every time I hear the word of God, I find myself boasting. And I'm not sorry. Tell your neighbor, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry that I'm blessed. I'm not sorry that I'm rich. I'm not sorry that I'm increasing. I'm not sorry that I'm multiplying. I'm not sorry. He said it. He said that I shall increase your glory. And I shall comfort you on every side. He said it. 
I'm not sorry that I'm comforted by the Holy Ghost. I'm not sorry. Tell him I'm not sorry. When a man understands the word of God, he will learn to boast. He will learn to boast. That's why he tells them, they which boast, let them boast in that they know him. And what is knowing him? How do you know him? Who is true? It's through the word. When you know the word, you learn to become a boastful person. You boast in the word. You don't boast outside truth. You boast in truth. You boast in truth. Oh. 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 So I'm not sorry. And don't ever be sorry for being a success. Because God is not about to stop. No. He told you he that spared not his son. He, if he didn't, give me the message of that. He said, hey, message. He says, if God did hesitate to put everything online for us, embracing our condition and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? What? What would he do for you? Is there anything? There is nothing God is not going to do for you. As I said every day, some of you think that, ah, me, I think I've gone past the stage of doing this. Really? When you have Jesus. When you have Jesus. When you have Jesus. Ah, me, I don't think I'll ever do this. I don't think I'll ever drive this car. I don't think I'll ever act. Do you think I can ever have that? Ah, no. Those things are for... No, 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 no. Listen. The moment you receive Jesus, he's always asking you, look at Jesus and look at what you're asking for. Look at Jesus and look at what you're believing for. Compare what you're believing for and Jesus. And then see if I did not hold back my only son for you filthy fellow. How can you worry about what you're asking for? That's why me, I don't worry. I don't worry. Let me tell you something. When the man of the spirit saw our inheritance... He went past even the physical things of the metaphysical world. He even went into the revelations of men. He said, whether Paul, whether Apollos, whether things, he should have said things only. That was enough. When I, do you know why I cannot be jealous when I find a man preaching so deep? The first thing that comes to my spirit is, I, uh, I own that too. Whatever he's saying is mine in Christ. <laughs> Whatever he's saying is mine. So how can I be jealous of what is mine? Listen, read. One, two, three, go. He says, whether Paul or Apollos or that is Peter or the world or life or all things, all things. He says, all are... <laughs> Woo! What I'm preaching is yours. For he says that the hidden things are of God, but the things which are revealed are for you and for your children. How can I be jealous when a man is preaching me? For he says that this word is a mirror. Every time they preach something and it goes deeper, I see myself. They preach deeper, I see myself. They preach deeper, I see myself. And he says, and as we behold like in a mirror, the glory of God. He says, we are metamorphosed. We are translated. We are changed into the same icon. That is image. From glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Somebody say, Amen. That is why I love seeing, being around deep people. Because everything they speak is mine. That is why I told you. One time I was praying and the Lord told me, look at the next generation. They're going to be so rich. So wise. So deep. Very deep. Because they inherit Apollos. And Paul's too. 
<laughs> Imagine a generation. You see, there was a time where we used to have rich people who were shallow. They were born again, but they were shallow. They used to be rich in the church. They buy cements, bags of cement, but they were shallow. But the time is come where the most successful businessman. <laughs> hey! After being the most successful businessman, that's my dad. After being the most successful businessman, that man of God gets the Bible. And after getting the Bible, he opens the mystery and he says, Great is the mystery of godliness. For he was of the Spirit, vindicated by the Holy Ghost, seen by the angels, preached in the world, gone up in the glory. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Tell your neighbor, they are talking about me. We are going somewhere. We are tired of just good Christians. Good lawyer Christians. No, we want good lawyer deep Christians. Everything is theirs. And they are the Lord's. There was a time when Watuligo used to say, God, God, don't give me money. Too much money. I will fall. One time I was praying it in university. And the Holy Spirit came and told me, stop praying such silly prayers. I said, oh. Told me don't pray such silly prayers. How selfish. How selfish. That I shouldn't give you more than enough to forget me. I, <laughs> what about the millions who are supposed to feed under your hand? Oh, how can you be selfish? How can money be stronger than me? Who made you? And it. I was delivered. I said as delivered. I read through the Old Testament and I didn't see one broke patriarch. I said I'm not going to be the first. Tell your neighbor, Abraham was rich. David was rich. Hey! Paul was rich. Jesus was rich. Are you going to be the first one? No, cannot happen. And yes, rich and deep. And holy. Set apart for God. In the name of Jesus. Tell your neighbor, that is my inheritance right there. In the name of Jesus. But you see, receiving is not just you saying, Ah, I receive it. It's not enough. It's not enough. I want to show you how to receive. Your life is never going to be the same again. Let me tell you, I have results. That's the one thing about Apostle Grace. I have results. Whether you're talking of the lame walking, tumors leaving, cancerous tumors disappearing, whether you're talking of HIV leaving blood, whether you're talking of dead bodies, I see results every day. But it is because I learned how to receive. I want to show you how to receive. The Lord showed me something and my life was never the same again. Never. If you get this thing I'm going to share, from today your life is going to change. The quicker you adjust, the quicker results come. Psalms 114. Psalms 119, sorry. Psalms 119. I want to show you something. I'm going to show you like three things. Three things. Psalm 119, verses, let's begin with verse 14. If you're there, you say amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, let's read the, the 14th verse. One, two, three, let's go. Read again. Uh-huh. Read it again. Uh-huh. Read it one more time. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, when the Bible says that I have rejoiced in all in the way of thy testimonies, as much as in the what? 
Underline the word in the way. The Hebrew word of in the way is derek, right? That's the Hebrew word for the word derek. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies. The word there for the way is derek. And derek is translated in three things. One, the first thing is a picture of how a man rejoices. When something is coming. When we are growing up. Eh, and you see a long lost relative. When you see them coming. You say. ah, You scream going for them right. Because you are happy. You see that joy. He says that is the joy every man. Who has received the word of God does. He rejoices in the way. In other words. You learn to rejoice. According to the expectation that you believe God for, as it's coming. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. You learn to rejoice as though you behold that what you've prayed for is on its way. That's rejoicing in the way of testimonies. And it borrows the second word also that engages a man to start a certain conversation as one which rejoices. I'll give you an example. If I ask and say, Father, I'm believing you for a car, I start rejoicing. I start rejoicing. I say, Woo! Thank you for my car. Woo! Thank you for my car, my God. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Oh, ha. I start conversing. I start, I start conversations of cars. I start to look guys around and tell him, wow. Do you know what God just gave me? Do you know what? That's a man who's receiving. You rejoice on it when, when it's on. Hey, you rejoice as if it's on its way. Because it can only be on its way for you to rejoice. Wish to wake up and put 10,000 chairs. And then you start rejoicing in the room. Thank you, God, because they are coming. Thank you, my God, because, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, wow, look at them packing. You see, you're playing it in your head and conversing with yourself. That is a man receiving. That is a man receiving. When you're sick and then you feel pain, then you say, in Jesus' name, amen. Start rejoicing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Because you've healed me. I am so healed. I'm so healed. Even if you don't feel like laughing, fake a laughter. And say, ha, ha, ha. I am so healed. Oh, praise God. I am so healed. Oh, hallelujah. I cannot be sick another day. I cannot believe that you've healed me. Yet the pain is still there. That is the man who has learned to receive. That is why when I read certain scriptures, I run mad. And he says, in as much as in all riches. He's not talking about just money. All riches. All riches. You remember when he's praying in Ephesus? He says that the Lord God of glory might grant unto them the spirit of wisdom and knowledge. All revelation in the knowledge of Christ. That the eyes of the understanding being flooded with light. That they might know. What is the hope of their calling? And what are the glorious riches or the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? What are the riches of the glory? The riches. So when the Bible speaks of all his riches, he's not talking about money. He's talking about every benefit you've received in Christ. You rejoice in it. You rejoice in it. When I read a scripture like, you have been given everything that pertains to life and godliness immediately you start to rejoice you start muttering with your spirit you say father i thank you because i've been given everything that pertains to life and godliness then you scream a little wow i've been given everything that pertains to life and godliness as your communication of your faith becomes effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you which is in christ you start dancing We used to do miracle healing services. Still do. But before the miracle service, I'll get in my room. I say, wow. 
Look at that crippled guy walking. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm rejoicing. I'm rejoicing right there. Before it even happens. You have to create the feeling of somebody excited. You have to excite your soul. That's the man who's receiving. Every riches that you read of in the scriptures, rejoice over them. Rejoice over them. Rejoice over them. There are some scriptures I read and sometimes I'm speechless. I just find that I don't have words. I just find myself go, whoa, this is also mine. Even this one. It was enough that you didn't add. But even this one is mine. Why? Because I've read it in the word. I learned to rejoice. I learned to be glad in spirit. And I start to speak forth my expectations. There's another person. They hear the same words. And then they go in a corner. (laughs) My God. You know we have suffered. If only you could remember. Remember. Remember me, Lord. Muhammad Zidukida. Yes, Zidukida. No. He gave you Jesus. He remembered you. (laughs) Hey! He remembered you. Now that you have Jesus, you're remembered. Tell your neighbor, now that you have Jesus. You're remembered. You're remembered. He says, save the Lord of Sabbath had sent us a what? If he had not sent us one, would have like it, like it, whatever. If that God had not remembered us, you and I would be dead right now. The fact that we have Jesus Christ, God remembered you already. God can never forget you anymore. It's too late. You have a high priest. Whoever liveth to make intercession for you, how can you be forgotten? That is why you can't find me telling people that God will remember you. God does not forget a New Testament creature. He says a mother shall forget her own child, but I will never forget you. He says I will never leave you, nor forsake you. How can he forget whom he has not left neither forsaken? Impossible. We are not in them which God remembers. But we are singing it in songs. We are singing it in songs every day. We are dissipating the spirit. We are killing our souls every day. Through ignorance. Tell your neighbor I'm free from that. Say it again. Hallelujah. So you learn to rejoice. You rejoice in it. Next verse. Verse 15. Verse 15. What's the next thing? One, two, let's go. Read it again. Uh Uh-huh. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, I will meditate. The word there for meditation also borrows the word to to sing, to talk, to speak. (laughs) As one ponders. You ponder and talk. You ponder and speak. You ponder and sing. So, sometimes, even me, these are things I do. I'm not telling you something I don't do. Sometimes I'm walking in the room and I'm saying, This is the richest man in the world. Because he has Jesus on his side. Then I go in the bathroom. Rasata Ramandori he shall come to your rising, Rabba, Baba, Baba, Apostle Graham, Rabba, Setele, Gentiles shall rise to your light, Mataka, Rabba, Baba, Sile, Brokosi, Paranto, Riba, Zele. The Bible says that you shall live long, Maraba Zaba, eh, O Satala, Baye, Sina, Rabba, Sekoya, Laba, Eremo, Satala. Some of you, 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 the way you sing is as if you're talking. Okay, talk. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Look at 1A2. 1A3. To talk. To sing. To speak. To ponder. To muse. To study. Hallelujah. You think on the word of God. You think on the word of God. You think on the word of God. And then you start talking. You oh. Then you sing it. That is why he tells us to sing unto ourselves. Speaking in psalms, hymns. And what? And spiritual songs. Making melody in our hearts. That is a man who is receiving. That is a man who is receiving. That's a man who is receiving. You, he says, speaking to yourselves. Give me the Amplified. He says, speak out to one another in psalms, in hymns, and spiritual songs, offering praise with the voices of instruments and making melody with all your heart to the Lord. That's the portion of any man who has learned to receive in God. You learn to speak things. You learn to, hey. Rejoicing is one thing. But it's also another thing for you to ponder and sing and speak. They all seem like the same, but they're different. The man which rejoices in testimonies, you're speaking of what he has done because you have asked for it. The one which meditates, you ponder on what you read of who he is. Oh. Then you learn to speak it. You learn to sing it. Some of you, you fear to talk the word. Do you realize that people who don't meditate, according to scripture, they don't have results. They don't have results. They think that every time everybody will pray for you. No. There are times the man of God will not be there. It doesn't mean that you're going to suffer because the man of God is not in the country. Lock yourself up in the room and sort yourself. Sort yourself. Sort yourself. Tell your neighbor, sort yourself. Let's go back to the scriptures. I'm not finished with that. And then he says, and I will delight myself in thy statutes. And he says, I will not forget thine word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something I discovered. Until your spirit embraces what God has promised to your spirit, and the ultimate feeling of a man which has received starts to surround your soul, you will never walk into it. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. That is why when he says, I will meditate, there's also a word called complaining. Even when you're complaining, complain in the word, not outside the word. Even when you're angry and hurting before God, go with the word. Complain in the word. Don't just scream, oh, no, 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 no. Even when you're complaining, put forth, meditate, muse, commune. Complain. Meditate in the word. Complain in the word. But somebody gets the word and puts it away and starts complaining. Now, God, it seems you've forgotten us. What does the word say? What does the word say? What does the word say? He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. How can you I'll get out of the word and say, oh, you've forgotten us. And then you think God will remember you. The Bible says you've set yourself in opposition. If you know that God has not forgot, if you know that he will never leave you nor forsake you, in spite of the fact that you feel forgotten, open your mouth and tell God, you know what, God, I feel like you've not left me. I feel like you've not forsaken me. I feel that you're still with me right here. You're going to be surprised what's going to come your way. You're going to be surprised what's going to come your way. But some people, it's very easy right now to even get offended. It's very easy right now to walk out of the word. Hallelujah. That's why attacks come, like the Bible says, on account of the word. On account of the word, attacks come. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person. No. It only means that you've learned too much and what you've learned has to be tested. That's what the Bible says. Some, because of the account of the word, when the word of God is put in their spirits, the Bible says, they are attacked. They are not attacked. Listen. Go, go the verse up. 
Thank you. Give me the amplifier. He says, and in the same way, the ones sown upon stony ground are those who, when they hear the word at once, receive and accept and welcome it with joy. Huh? And they have no real root in themselves, and so they endure for a little while. Then when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, they are not under attack because their father, they bewitched them. They are not under attack because they have demons in their family. They are under attack because they know too much. Listen, every revelation you receive comes with a responsibility. And that responsibility comes with what I call the testations of the Spirit. And the testations of the Spirit is every fire that must burn every man that has believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why I tell people that the ultimate blessing of us when we became believers in Christ is the fact that, like the Bible says, He, he possessed us. In our reigns. While before we came from our mother's wombs, the Bible says he possessed you. He owned you. When he filled you with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost took over. The law of exchange was complete. From that day it was not you. It was him. Paul says I'm dead, yet I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And he says I'm the life that I now live. I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself freely for me. That's our portion in Christ. You're not of yourself. You remember when he says that when they put you before a council. He says you shall need not to say anything. For he says it shall not be with you which speaketh but the Holy Ghost. Meaning that God has honored you and I to a place where he doesn't separate me from the Holy Spirit. Everything I speak is spirit. Because I received of him. Somebody say amen. Some of you, you're hearing deep things. But you don't know that those deep things are going to come with a certain thing to them. And the thing that is going to come to them is the testations that are going to come because of the word you received. The devil does not try mad men. He tries men which are wise. Hallelujah. That's why you don't hear that they abducted a street child. Or that they knocked a mad man. You don't hear those things. They knock no more men. Hallelujah. So he says that there is an attack that comes on account of the word. Because you have filled yourself with too much word. And the Bible says, they immediately are offended. They become displeased, indignant, resentful. And they stumble and fall away. Why do they lose it? Because there is something that has come to attack the word inside their spirits. Hallelujah. That's why I always tell people. When you get to a place of saying that I'm paying the ultimate price of knowledge. You see, let me tell you something. The Bible says that I labored more than all my brethren. Yet not I, but the grace of God that labored in me. The grace of God laboring in a man draws a very clear, definitive place of a man knowing God in a certain way. The grace of God distributed to you and I is to the intent that we might know him. That is eternal life. That we might know the one true God as his only son, Jesus. Because when you know the truth, the truth makes you free. The literal word there is presents you free as you are. I don't know that you got it. When you became born again, you became free in God. Freedom enveloped your spirit. The heavens are proof that you are a free child. But there is a seeking of manifestation of the same. So it says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you. The word there is like, present you free. He shall present you free. In other words, the word of God will start manifesting your freedom. Somebody say amen. And the process of manifesting into our freedom, as we continue to meditate, read, and do all these kinds of things, there are distinctions of the spirit. There are things that you'll start to experience. In God. Knowledge is the true representation of a man endowed with grace. That is why when the Christ came, he was full of grace and truth. There is no place where grace cannot mingle with truth. Grace is knowledge because it's the person of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Jesus, the man, which was the word? The Bible says he was tempted in all ways. Why was he tempted in all ways? Because he was the word. He just didn't carry the word. 
He was the Word that was made flesh. He says, we beheld His only glory as the only true Son of God, full of grace and truth. And he says that we now have not a high priest, which cannot be touched with our infirmities. But the Bible says, but he was in all points tempted, like as we, yet was without sin. What does the Bible mean when he says was without sin? That which is not done in faith is sin. That means that the Christ never walked out of faith, and which faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I don't know if I'm making sense. Am I making sense? The temptations of the Christ was not because he was the son of God, but it was because he was the word. Creation groans for the true manifestation of the children of God. Them which are matured in the word of God. Not Nepios, the babes, but they which mature in the word of God. Hallelujah. Somebody one time came and told me, ah, I have cancer. The doctor said I have cancer. I told him that's why it had to come to you. Because you know too much enough to walk out of it. You can handle that one. The Bible says, God will not tempt you above that which you are able. Whatever you see in your spirit, you can conquer. Whatever is frustrating you right now, you can conquer. He can't test you beyond that which you are able. He says, but he will with the temptation provide a way through. He says, there has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Tell your neighbor, God is faithful. Tell him again. He says, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Listen, there is nothing in your life that you are not bigger than. It's not there. It came your way because you can handle it. I said it came your way because God knew you have enough DNA in your system to flush it out. I told people the story. One of our boys called Kelly. He calls me Nairobi. Skinny like a grasshopper. And he tells me, HIV has hit me. I'm down with AIDS. And I remember this was a guy I preached the gospel to. For a couple of years. I just asked him, how long do you want it in your body? Because I knew you, you can manage it. He told me one week. We prayed day one. We prayed day two. We prayed day three. First day, it's HIV negative. The doctor came back and said, there's something wrong. We need to check again. He went back. They came back again, test negative. They went to four or five of us, negative. Even got married. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why? Because he gave it one week. Whether the doctors think that HIV is incurable or not, there's a guy who stared up in it in the face and told him, I give you one week. Hallelujah. That's the life of a believer. But some of you, they tell you, ah, you failed. Immediately you die. Before you die. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I will not die, I will live. To see the goodness of the Lord. In the land of the living. Grasp it. Grasp it. Seize it. Take a hold of it in your spirit and say, this is mine and I'm not letting it go. I rejoice in it. I meditate on it. Day and night. I will not forget your precept, he says. That means you don't forget that word. You don't forget it. You don't forget it. Anytime you have an issue, you remind God, you tell him, remember you told me in this year. That I shall not die, but I will live to see your goodness in the land of the living. You said it. I will not forget. I will not forget. I will not forget. See, even your body can start to wither, but you don't forget. One of our own was married. 
And he has been living with his wife for a long time. And she had carried the virus for a long time. And then he went to the doctor and they found him negative. And then he came to my office and told me, you know what? I told my wife I could never get it. You don't need to clap. <laughs> then he told me, Apostle, get me people who, know, who you know. I see HIV and they, they worry that they are going to die. Those are the ones I want to pray for. I started sending him people. Because he feels. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Tell your neighbor I will not die of disease. I'll go to heaven healthy. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'll not die of high blood pressure. I'll not die of cancer. I'll not die of diabetes. I'll not die of disease. I'll go to heaven at my time. When I am done. In the name of Jesus. That's your portion in Christ. That's your portion in Christ. Now I want to finish this. And then he said that men have been led away because of the simplicity which is in Christ. <laughs> And that's when I realized that certain things can be bad and some things cannot be bad. Some things can be taken in and some things cannot be taken in. Some things can be received by men which are able to bear them and some things might not be received by men which are able to bear them. He says that when there is a making of eunuchs, he says some eunuchs are made by men. He says some are born eunuchs. And he says and some make themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom. And he says, he that is able to receive it, let him receive it. That means that this, not everybody's spirit is going to receive some of the things we are saying. Not because we are wrong, but they are too heavy for some people. Every degree of word comes with a certain weight of glory. Certain truths are weightier than the other. And the transition of that is the very manifestation of the glory of God and a man's spirit. In consonance with what he can bear. Hallelujah. He says, he that is able to receive it, let him what? Receive it. Let him lambano it. Let me tell you as I close, there are certain things that are too hard to receive. It's not that they are not in scripture, but it is because there are certain things that are too hard for certain people to receive. They are unable to take them in their spirits. That these things are not only true, but they are mine in Christ. The difference between you and the most successful man in the world sometimes is simple. That he was able to receive it. He was able to receive it. Some of you certain things intimidate you. Certain levels of success intimidate you. When you look at certain things, they become too big for you. And they overcome you. They overrun you and override you. To a place where you feel, ah, I don't think I deserve it. That's not my passion. That's okay. Me, I chose to believe him full board up to the end. However crazy it is, I've chosen to believe God. Let him be true and every man a liar. Somebody say amen. I said, let God be true and every man a liar. If you're believing God that you're going to be a success in Uganda, you'll be a success in Uganda. If you believe God that you're going to be a success in East Africa, wonderful. If you tell God you're going to be a success in Africa, that's okay. We used to meditate and speak these things every day. Last Thursday, somebody showed me our audio live stream and we had more than 5,300 people listening in. Even our enemies inclusive. Saying amen. Amen. <laughs> 5,300. Listening in live on radio. Not, not television live stream. No, that one also has its own thousands. And I say, there are 5,000 people who tune in. They are somewhere. You don't know where they are. Some of them, they told them, if we see you in Fanero, we shall kill you. Then they tuned and said, okay, I will not go there in the body. But I will attend in the spirit. <laughs> Some man of God told me, Apostle, you have arrived. 
And I told him, no, I've not. We've not yet begun. <laughs> tell your neighbor, we've not yet begun. Tell the other person also and tell him, I have not yet begun. Yes. Somebody congratulates you, you bought a very expensive car. Wow! You tell him, oh, I've not yet begun. Don't celebrate yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. Hallelujah. That's what greatness is. That's the seed working in the inside of you. He said that I shall make thee great. The Bible says the man grew so great until he was very great. The, the rendering failed to find a word to define it. He said until he was very great. He, he failed to get the word. <laughs> Hallelujah. He, he wanted to, to, to read it. He says the man works great and went forward and grew until he became, the man looks for that and says, very great? Yeah, very great. Let's write very great. God can bless you until if somebody wants to define you, they start to say like, Very Tell somebody I carry greatness within me. There is a seed burning in my soul. It is telling me that there is something inside here. Hey! I asked somebody, I told him, what does it feel like? No, when the feeling sets in. What does it feel like to, to carry something I has not seen? Ear has not heard. Has not entered into the heart of a man. And he says, but he has revealed it unto us by his spirit. That means that the agitations of our spirits Meditate on things men haven't seen. They meditate on things men haven't heard. That means God is putting a revelation in you. No man has even spoken. I don't know if they understand what I'm saying. God is putting a revelation in you. No man has ever spoken. God is going to show through you no man has, something no man has ever seen. He's going to admit something in your soul that has never entered any man's heart. That if a man hears, that's why when Isaiah was, when Isaiah saw the mystery of the Christ, he turned to his friend, very worried, and he said, who shall believe our report? Who? I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. There are things doable and believable, but there are things that are so unbelievable. Isaiah saw the mystery of the Christ. The manifestation of that generation that comes after him, believing on him. How they owned all things. And he says, who shall believe our report? To whom is the hand of the Lord revealed? Why? Because he looked among his peers and he realized nobody can understand this thing. It is too big. Do you know that some of you, God is going to do miracles through you? That because men can't believe it, they'll give you a miracle something like cult. Like he must have stolen money. He had a deal with the government. He went underwater. God do something in your life that men won't believe. Some of us are excited about things believable. People can believe God heals. I'm not talking of that. I'm talking of something deeper than that. I'm talking of God doing something in your life. Even you, you first get scared. And a man who looks after you, they say, no, no, no. This is not God. This is another thing. Why? Because we don't know God doing this. The things we've seen God do. This one has gone beyond what we read in the Bible. And it's going to happen in your life. Who shall believe your report? That you are a Ugandan. Some of you, you're transitioning into a life where people will not even believe that you were born and raised in Uganda. You're going to do things your education level could not do. You're going to do things your tribe could never do. Your family line could never do. And men are going to say, we can't believe it. We can't believe it. Rejoice in those things. Rejoice in those things. 
Rejoice in those things. Can I say something crazy? Allow me, please. I have seen by God that when a man perceives truth, not hears, not reads, but perceives truth, that man starts to walk in a certain plane eternal that everything present becomes shallow because it carries no expectation beyond that which is visible I don't know that I'm making sense carry him, just put him down put him down brother don't fear, it's well listen listen, I want to finish with this Eternal life is not the life to come. It's the life we experience when we believe. But I've seen that when a man perceives truth, everything physical becomes shallow. It becomes too shallow. Why? Because it's predictable by appearance. And that man starts to live in an ever-fixed mark and life of wanting and always groaning for the manifestation of the things not seen. Because it's the only way the predictable becomes unpredictable. That's the true source of who you are. He says you are a peculiar people. Your strengths. Do you know what that means? It means they expect you to come from there. You come from there. They expect you to be flying from above. You brought from the ground. They think you're failing. You increase and multiply more. When they think they know you, God surprises them and proves to them that they don't know you. Let me tell you, when a man has perceived truth, he will never be fully apprehended. They will never fully understand me. They will never fully understand you. Why? Because you are with the man, the Bible says, who searches out the bottomless things of God. He says, for the Spirit of God searches out, sounding the bottomless things of God. The only problem with them, which one to receive sound, expect voices. And in that life, it's not about the voices, it's the sounds of the Spirit. That's why trumpets speak in Revelation. He says, the trumpet of the Lord was blown, saying, so they know not neither see. For if their eyes were open and ears were hearing, he says they would be converted at any one time and would be healed. That's why he speaks of them. And he says, and the spirit searching out, he says, exploring and examining everything, even sounding the profound and bottomless things of God. The divine counsels and things hidden beyond human scrutiny. Do you know what it means for things to be beyond human scrutiny? It means that the stuff coming out of you, no man can scrutinize I don't know the understand what I'm saying. No man can put on a, on, on a table to weigh and examine. Because they are beyond examinable. They are too approved beyond. They are, they are of the things too excellent. That they behold the end of all things. For the man says that I've seen the perfection of all things. And he says, but the word of God became broader. When this word gets into your spirit, epignosis, the advanced knowledge which is of God, it's beyond anything that can ever be defined as perfection. Therefore, beyond any man's scrutiny or examination, there are things that cannot be examined anymore because they are too deep for a man to examine with a carnal mind. If a man is of the spirit and he stumbles on them, he can only agree, for we can never do anything against the truth but for truth. He cannot disagree. There are things that are too eternally true. Now, a man walked to the end of all perfection and he turned back and he still saw the word deeper. And then he entered the place of beyond perfection. Meditate on a place beyond perfection. That is why the church in Thessalonians proves the things most excellent. It's not in the things excellent only. It, it, it proves the things excellent. We, we are the ones we, who judge truth. That's, that is why in that dispensation, the trust on the man's spirit, ah, it, it, it starts now to create everything new. He, he says, speak the things that become sound doctrine. 
In that, you're, you're not even in the place and class of understanding doctrine. You go past doctrine. And, and he says, and you start to speak the things that become sound doctrine. That means everything you speak, even if it was not known as true, it becomes true. Because you're past the perfection of any man to approve you. Listen, we know God. We know God. And the word of God is more eternal. It's too true for any man to scrutinize. Now, imagine living with things bottomless, beyond a man's scrutiny. How can you be predicted when a man can't scrutinize? What a man can't scrutinize, he can't predict. And that's the generation we are entering into. They are not going to be predictable. You're not going to be predictable. They won't predict your finances. They won't predict your ministry. They won't predict your marriage. They won't predict your business. They won't predict your career. They won't even predict your body. You'll be 90 and you'll be looking like you're 35. Why? Because you examine the same things. How can a man stumble in a thing people still studying to be perfected and there's a man who went to the end of all perfection and he saw the broadness of the word beyond perfection when that man is before God they are not even talking about sin it is too low it's too shallow to discuss it's too shallow to discuss it is too shallow he is not discussing oh God my, my uniform my car my family, you, you cannot discuss on those things. You can't. The revelator saw things and he called them thither. He says, come up thither and see. The, the angel told him, come up thither. Leave that level of, of men. Stop speaking like men. Come up and see things that will blow your brain. Paul only went third dimensional. And he saw things which were not lawful to utter. Yet there are more dimensions above that. Understand communication is deeper than what men preach. He says, I saw things. He says, I was caught up in paradise. Give me amplified. And he had utterances beyond the power of man to put into words, which man is not permitted to utter. This was third dimension. And men go to the fourth dimension of the spirit. They go fifth dimension. And then you see present, past, and future. You start aligning worlds. Oh, he says, for the foundations of the world are out of course. For neither, neither know nor understand. For I've said, ye are gods. But you'll die like me, amen. Oh! Oh! You mean the foundations of the world are out of course. And that's when the Lord told me, you can never put the foundations of the world back in course until you become... I saw that place. It's fifth dimension. Five. When a man goes to the fifth dimension of the spirit, you see the foundations of the world as they are. And you see them out of course. And you realize the only reason why they're not in course is because a certain man has rejected a certain knowledge or a certain wisdom. In that place, human words have no power to utter. Because the things experienced there are deeper than human articulation. They end in third dimension. That's where Paul saw. It didn't mean that's where he ended. No. But I've seen that many of our saints have not even gone there. They've not even gone there. I hear people speaking about the dimension of the spirit. And a guy goes up to the eighth dimension and you listen and you realize this is actually second. It's not eighth. Why do you think you speak in tongues? And the Bible says, and the Holy Spirit, he says sometimes we know not what to say as we ought to say. There is even a place beyond tongues. He says, but the Holy Spirit maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. <laughs> until you meet that place, you'll never understand silence. And until you understand that silence of communion, you'll never understand the true experience of solitude with that infinite God. It's called separation. When people say, I am separated. What do you mean by you're separated? How can you be separated when you're still receiving various voices? All without signification. And without, you don't even interpret one signification of the same. He says, and if you know not the meaning of the voice, you become barbaric. And he that speaketh, barbaric to you. 
they are receiving uncoordinated signs of the things of the Spirit. They are still here and they are thinking that they are going further. Why? Because they are approved of men as workers. He didn't call us to be approved of men. He said, told us to study the word that you might be approved unto God, the worker, that accurately divides the word of truth. That you need not to be ashamed. That you need not to be ashamed. How can you speak of that when you've not understood the silence of relationship? That solitude, oneness with God, that place where the Holy Ghost, where you get to God and you have no prayers, you, you have no utterance. You, you have no utterance. I mean, a tongue can be uttered. There are things in our spirits that cannot be uttered. He says the Holy Ghost gets to a point and he says no. No human language can define this. No spiritual tongue can speak this. This is just a groan. And the Bible says, And the Spirit maketh intercession for us for groanings which cannot be uttered. That man has already gone beyond the third dimension of the Spirit. When they get to fifth, the Lord starts to show you the foundations of the world. You walk and see the world as is. Why? Because you realize that your responsibility is not only Uganda, it's the world. Your responsibility is not Africa, it's the world. You start to see its foundations. And then you see them out of course. And then you realize, uh uh-uh, this is because men neither know, nor understand. When true knowledge and understanding comes back in the church, the earth is going to be put back in its fold. And things are going to start connecting themselves. Imagine how things start to realign themselves. You understand what I'm saying? Somebody watches a movie like Doctor Strange. A guy just gets one timeless thing and twists it and the world gets back in order, which is crumbling down. Men of this world are studying our world more deeper. He says, for the men of this world have become more what? Wiser in their own generation than the sons of light. He twists something, reverses time and puts everything back as it was. That's called restoration. Restoration is not when you can still bear witness that it cracked once or that you even bear the the testimony that it once cracked. Restoration is a place where it is restored. It's put back to its original state. It carries not even the history that it was once broken. When restoration comes back in church, we will not judge men again. Even prostitutes will become virgins. I'll speak things that the rest I have to say have no words. Raise your hands. More of me. Speak another time. More of you. Jesus, more of you, more of you, more of you, more of you, Jesus, more of you. Can you raise your hands right now? I feel God is releasing something. Are you ready to receive it? It's beyond what? Holy Spirit, I pray they start to receive it now. 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 I shall start to carry them in front. Receive it now. Receive it now. Just carry them in front. Receive it now. Receive it now. Listen, God is taking you places. <laughs> I used to think that, you see, there are places God will take you and you have much to say. And there are places God will take you and you have nothing to say. Because human words cannot relate. Start to receive it right now. Holy Spirit, separate them. Bring them in front. Bring them in front. Bring them in front. I feel there's something happening right now. I feel there's something happening right now. 
Hold her like a human being. Start to receive it right now. Watch her. Stand in, stand in between. Put your legs in between her. Start to bring them here. I feel God is anointing certain people. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Power of the Holy Ghost. Power of you. Jesus, more of you. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Prophets. Wherever you are. Receive it. Jesus, more of you. Stand next to her. More of you. More of you. I see about three more prophets. God is meeting you there. Power of the Holy Ghost. More of you. the apostolic voices in this house God anoints you right now for these things you're putting the world in order somebody say in the name of Jesus I'm putting the world in order I'm putting the world in order God anoint those apostles anoint them anoint those teachers of the world put them there Hey! Anoint those pastors. Take them there. Anoint those evangelists. Take them there. More of you. More of you. I've lost my choir. <laughs> the Spirit tells me. Hey. The Spirit tells me. You're going places beyond human language. The days of fellowship with words have come to an end. We are going to enter places where we commune without saying a word. Yet with the deepest conversations of spirit. If you're able to receive it, receive it. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.